Welcome to this video on factorizing. Now just quickly to start with, if you haven't seen the level one video on factorizing and you're not sure how to do it, please make sure that you visit that first because it's building upon that skill. So just to show you what you did learn in that factorizing video, we had quadratics, which means we had an x squared, a number in front of an x, and a number by itself. When we had all three of these factors, we were factorizing a quadratic. Now in order to factorize it, that means to put it into brackets, we had to find two numbers which multiplied to make this end number here, and add together to make this middle number, the positive 5. Now in this case, the two numbers are positive 2 and positive 3. They multiply to make the positive 6 and add together to make the positive 5. Then we put both of those two numbers in brackets with an x. Now we're going to look at a slightly more complex example of this. Here we have an x squared and another squared number. This is 4 squared. When this happens, you'll notice we don't have this middle x term. But in actual fact, it's like having an x term of 0x in the middle. This is exactly the same thing, x squared plus no x's minus 16. When we look at it like this, we can realize that we can find two numbers that will multiply to make negative 16 and add together to make 0. And you'll find this will only work with squared numbers, because in this case, negative 4 and positive 4 will multiply to make 16, and they will cancel each other out to get back to 0 x's. These two numbers must be the same so that we have no x's in the middle. Now the trick is, if you see a squared x and a squared number like 16, 25, 36, 49 or 64, you know that you have to do a technique like this. The shortcut is that you can just square root this number at the very end here, the 16 to get 4, and put an x minus 4 and an x plus 4. Make sure that 1 is a minus and 1 is a plus so that the plus and the minus will cancel out to make 0. Let's look at one more example. Here we have x squared minus 36. Now this is another example of having a squared x term and a squared number, and it must be a minus in the middle here. Now in this case, again, we have no x's in the middle. So we need to find two numbers that multiply to make negative 36 and add together to make 0. Now remember the trick is that we square root this 36 at the end to make 6. So in brackets, we can have two sets of brackets, each with an x at the start, and we can have our x minus 6 and an x plus 6, and in that way the plus 6 and the minus 6 will add to make 0, and multiply to make negative 36. And that is how we do this by hand. Now we're going to look at a technique which will allow you to do this on your graphics calculator. If you don't have one of these graphics calculators, this is going to make your life incredibly hard compared to those people that do. So it really is worth your while investing in one of these. To solve a quadratic that equals zero, or to factorize a quadratic such as this, we follow the same steps. So let's see how we do it on a calculator like this. Our first step is we need to press the menu button. This menu button takes us back to our main screen with all of our options on it. Once you're in your menu, you'll see a screen something like this. We want to click equation, and it'll be in various places depending on which model of the calculator you have. Either way, find it and press execute down the bottom. Once you press execute down the bottom, it'll come up with an equation screen. There's several types of equations you could have. Our focus when we're factorizing and when we're solving is polynomial equations. So that means you're going to press F2. That's to select your polynomial equation, and that will be the number straight underneath where it says poly. After you've clicked poly, it will ask you what degree your equation is. Now this just means what is the highest power of x. Now here we have a power of 2, here we have a power of 1, here we have nothing. So our highest power is always going to be 2 if we're solving a quadratic. If you happen to have to solve or factorize something with an x to the power of 3, you'd have to press 3 as your degree. But most of the time you're going to be pressing 2. So press F1, which will represent the second power, and then you're going to be on your solver screen. You'll notice at the very top of your screen you're going to have an ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now we need to know what the numbers a, b, and c represent. These are just the numbers in front of the x squared, the x, and the one by itself. Letter a is just the number in front of the x squared. In this case it's going to be 1, because we have 1 x squared. b here is going to be negative 3, because that's the number in front of the x term. And 2, or positive 2, is going to be the c term. That's the one that is the number by itself and you can ignore this equals zero. 
So what you'll have to do is you'll have to put in a number for A, which is 1, and press execute down the bottom. Then you're going to have to press negative 3 and execute. That saves the number for B. Then you're going to have to press 2 and execute. That will save your number for C. Once these are all in, you can press F1, which has a little solve button above it, or you can press execute, and that's going to solve your quadratic for you. Then it's going to come up with a screen that looks like this. So you'll still see your equation up the top, but we've been given two answers for x. We've actually solved this equation if it equaled zero. But for factorizing, we need to do one more step. We have to write out our brackets with x at the start of each one, and then we have to put the opposite of each of these numbers in the brackets with the x. So in this case, we've got our first answer for x as 2, so we put it in the brackets with x as negative 2 or minus 2. And same, we've also got plus 1 as one of our answers, so we put it in the brackets with the x as minus 1. If these happen to have been negative 2 and negative 1, we would have put x plus 2 and x plus 1 in our brackets. So whatever your answer is, we're going to make it opposite and put it in the brackets with the x. So this is how you factorize using your calculator. It's great because not only can you solve if you've got crazy numbers like 756, but you can also factorize really easily. Let's look at another question now. Here we have x squared plus 9x plus 20. First thing we're going to do is press this menu button on the side. And once we've got that menu button, we're going to press equation because that's where we're going. Once you're in the equation screen, remember you're solving a polynomial equation, not a simultaneous and not a solver problem. It's polynomial. Once you've got into the polynomial screen, then you need to press number 2 for your second degree power, because that is the highest power that you have when you're solving. You would press 3 for x to the power of 3 or 4 for x to the power of 4. On the third step, you need to enter your numbers for a, for b, and for c. Remember that a is the number in front of the x squared. If there's no number, it's 1. b is the number in front of x, which in this case is 9. And 20 is the number for c. So we put each of those numbers in sequentially. We press 1 and then we have to press execute to save it down the bottom here. Then we press 9 for b and execute to save it. Then we press 20 for c and again execute to save. Once you put all of these numbers in, you can press F1 to solve it or you can press execute again and that will solve the problem. And you should come up with an answer screen. This means x, if you were to solve the problem, would be negative 5 or negative 4. However, we're trying to factorize the problem. So we're going to make each of these numbers negative or opposite and put it in brackets with an x. And that would give us a final answer of x plus 5 and x plus 4. And that is how we would factorize. So here's what you need to know from this video. The first step you need to know is that you can factorize quadratics that are both squares. You have an x squared and you have a number that's been squared, like 25. This means that there is a zero x term in the middle here. So we're going to have to square root the n number, in this case that will equal 5, and put both the 5s in brackets with an x each. We have to make one 5 positive and one 5 negative, and that way the two 5s are going to cancel out to make zero x's in the middle and multiply to make the number squared. And this will only work if you have a negative number squared. It won't work if you have a positive number squared. The next thing we learned was how to factorize on our calculator. Now on our calculator we have to go to the main menu and press equation. Once we've pressed that equation button, we need to select polynomial equation to factorize. Then we press 2 for the second degree quadratic. Then we type in each number for a, the number before the x squared, for b, which would be 0 for this example, the number before the x, and for c, the number that's by itself. In this case, that would be negative 25. After each number, you have to save it by pressing the exe key on your calculator. That's the blue one on the bottom right-hand corner. Once you've done that, you can press F1 to solve the problem, or execute will solve the problem as well. Then you're going to have an answer screen come up. With your answers, make each of them negative, or if they're negative, make them positive, and put them in brackets with an x. And that will factorize any problem, no matter how difficult, on your calculator, even if there's fractions involved. So let's have a look at some more questions then. Firstly, let's factorize this problem up here. Now hopefully you're noticing by now that this is a squared term at the front and a squared number at the back. Now we can square root this number at the back, 64, and that equals 8. So we can put that number in brackets with a positive 8 and a negative 8. 
Remember, these two are going to add up to zero when you add them together and multiply to make your negative 64 at the end. Alternatively, we can solve problems on our calculator. Now, this one here is relatively simple and may actually be easier just to do in your head. However, if you did want to solve on your calculator, you'd have to go to the main menu, you'd have to press equation, then you'd have to press F2, which is for polynomial, then you'd have to press 2, because the highest power in this one is 2, then you would have to press 1, because 1's the A number in front of the X squared, negative 2 for B, and 1 for C, pressing execute after each one to save it. Then you press F1 in your calculator to solve or execute, and finally, when you come up with an answer screen, you're going to make each number negative. Now, in this answer screen, this is a very strange one and doesn't often come up. You'll notice it only has one answer, which is negative 1, and it has a times 2 here. This means both answers are negative 1. So we can put this negative 1 in brackets twice, as long as we make it opposite. So that would be x plus 1 and x plus 1 again. Now this is exactly the same as saying x plus 1 squared. So the shortcut is that if you see just one number coming up here, you can put just one bracket down, just an x plus 1, as long as you put a squared down the bottom here. If this was to be a 3, if you're solving something to the third degree, something with x to the power of 3, you could have x plus 1 to the power of 3 if this was your answer and it would have a 3 at the back here instead of a 2. So hopefully you've got the steps of solving on your calculator, which is probably one of the most useful skills, but also you've picked up the step of factorizing when you have two squared terms and there's a negative between them.